I do want to pose this question, and I'll explain why I'm asking it. Uh, if you're on a street corner at 2 a.m. downtown by yourself, and you see an African American walking around with a hoodie, his pants are low, and then you see a white guy walking around, maybe well dressed, who are you going to be afraid of? Who are you going to be afraid of? Who are you going to try to get away from? Now, I think a lot of people would say the African American, not because they're racist, but they have an unconscious bias in their head. And that unconscious bias is what minorities have to face every day. It doesn't mean that there's a gazillion racist out there. It doesn't mean that you're a racist. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I'm going to be as honest with you as I can on the radio right now. And you know what? I'm always, I always try to be honest on this show, but I'm going to be honest again. If I saw somebody as an African-American dressed like that, and I saw somebody white that was dressed nice, I'd probably want to get away from the African-American. And it's not because I'm a racist. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with an un something unconscious, an unconscious bias that is in our brain. So I want to ask you, the Wait, callers dr now. That, dr dressed like what, Brian? Uh, I, again, uh, just dress, dress nice. Nice, okay. Dress respectful, but I, I want to. I'm asking the callers that same question. Let See, me. Just... I, I wouldn't have that. Okay. If, if, All right. Why, why would you? Okay. So you're saying there, there's there's context to, to every single situation. Okay. All right. Brian. All right. Well, I'm if, if, to be I, if, if I saw if I saw a casually nice dressed African American and I saw a, a white guy, that's not who, what I said. Who had who had a that's tank top and he was covered in tattoos. That's not what it's I said. Like I, I would feel much more comfortable not... with. The African American. Okay, well, I mean, it, it, did you it's, not it's, it's all it's all variable based on on how these okay. people, whether, okay. regardless of what color of skin they have, right. how how that's they present themselves to the public, because that's how they want to be perceived. That's Brian. not that's not the example that I gave at the start of this segment. I don't know if you heard me, but that's that's not the example that I gave. And the, hopefully the listeners were hearing me out on that, because that's that's the, the scenario that I gave. That's not the scenario that I gave. 702-257-5396 is the number to call if you want to be a part of the program. Let's start off with Carl. Carl, you're first up in the Vegas take. Go ahead. Hey, what's up, Carl? Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, two things. One, um, whoever's uh, – I don't really listen to the radio, you guys, that much because uh, I'm usually at work, and I just so happened to jump in someone's vehicle and overheard you guys talking. But whoever's, like, flipping the script with what the first person said of the description of the two people, that's not yes. right. It doesn't matter. JD, uh, that would be you. Go ahead and address this caller. What, what, what do you mean it's not right and it doesn't matter? Okay, if you, I, 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 I always factor okay. that in. Always. Okay. How 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 the person I, presents himself you, is much more important me, to me than the color of their skin. Always. Right. Okay. Well, let me tell you something. I am mixed. I am Chinese, white, black, and Indian. I am not from Vegas. I am from Louisiana. I grew up seeing the racism. I grew up with it. I understand it. Even the Black Lives Matter thing, I hate it. But this is what I perceive with I'm walking down the street and I see two different guys. If I see a guy, being that I watch TV, I watch TV and to where, okay, if I got to see a guy in a suit, he might have a gun under there. If I see a guy with a hoodie with his pants sagging, okay, he may have a gun under his hoodie. I don't know. Who am I going to get away with? Who am I going to get away from? That depends on how they look at me. It just depends on how each person looks at me. It could be the white person dressed with the hoodie. I'm going to get away from him to go to the person that's dressed in the suit. That's just the way, like like he, uh, Brian was saying, that you have the unconscious bias of, okay, this person is clean cut. Let right. me go over here. Exactly. You know, and, and that, but that's that's not an unconscious bias. That's just me assessing the situation and saying to myself, this person wants to be perceived a certain way based on how they dress. That, that's so that, I, I factor that in, and I get I don't I don't look at skin color because it makes no sense under those circumstances. Well, it doesn't. I, okay, okay. You, well. you may not look at skin color, but it you everyone looks at skin color because I even look at skin color. I I, I don't and honestly I do not like I ha, I am prejudiced against ignorance. It doesn't matter what color you are. Exactly work, as I, am I. I work on the yep. side of a gentleman right now. Me and him joke a lot. We, me and him, we, we like. I call him black. He calls me white. Right. We go back and forth. And sir, we, you and, know, and, we just we have fun. Sure, but, and sir, I'm just trying is. to be as I'm trying to be as honest as I can, sir. And I, I got to get to some of the other callers. I agree with everything you said. I'm trying to be as honest as I can. Just because you have an unconscious bias does not mean that you are necessarily a racist. Seven zero two two five seven five three nine six. Go to Devon. Devon, you're next on the Vegas take. Hey, what's up, Devon? Sure, sir. I'm just... yeah, if I was walking down the street and I seen that, I mean, pretty much 
I mean, I'll probably be scared of the white person just to keep it real because it's like nowadays I have to worry about them calling the police on me for me walking down the street. You know what I mean? Like I'm a black person. I'm from a I know exactly. I know exactly what you're saying. And do you understand what I am saying? It is an unconscious bias. It doesn't mean that you're a racist. doesn't mean that you hate all white people. doesn't mean that I hate all black people. We all have to an extent an unconscious bias. Would you agree with that, Devon? Yes, yes, I agree with that. And I'm most definitely not racist, y'all. You know I mean, uh, I love all of y'all. You know I mean, it's not, it's not so much even the problem with the police. It's just the people with the guns that's doing the retarded stuff. You know what I mean? And it's not so much with the black people that's out here. You know what I mean? Everybody's scared of sure. the black person doing the retarded stuff. Well, let me just say this. In a perfect world, Devon, I, I wish you didn't have to go through that. I wish you weren't afraid of a white person with a badge. I, I wish that you didn't have – unfortunately, it's the society that we live in now. doesn't mean no, you're a horrible person. He, he's saying that someone would see him walking in the street and call the police on them. That's Caucasian. The person, you know what I mean, uh, the person who's approaching you, you know what I mean, like the officer, like all officers are not bad. All black people are not bad. All white people are not bad. It's the person, right. you know what I mean? You got to watch the people you can run yourself around, and you run into an asshole. Hopefully, you can get away from it and exactly. continue to live. I don't mean to cut absolutely. Out, and, and, and and is there is there a stereotype that's been perpetuated by the media when when someone sees you walking in the street if you're if you're if you're dressed a certain way because of what the the thought process behind behind you or you you doing something does that exist? Yes, but in I I, I really think that in the United States. People are starting to think like I am. A lot of people are starting to think like I am and realize that it's not about the color of the skin. It's about how that person presents themselves and how they want to be perceived by the world. And, and you can tell that by the demeanor and how that person is dressed. I would also say you weren't brought up in the hood and the way people want to perce perceive themselves is the way they were brought up. And the way you think they should perceive themselves is not the way they think they should perceive themselves. Those are two different opinions. You think someone dressed up in a suit and tie or dressed in khakis uh, is professional. There are African-Americans out there that were raised in the hood, and they believe when their pants are drooped down and they're dressed a different way, that's a sign of respect. It is different cultures, and you are failing to understand that. Your perception is different than their perception. Let's get back to the phone calls, 257-5396. Let's go to Johnny. Johnny, you're next on the Vegas Take. Hey, what's up, Johnny? Thank you, Johnny. Appreciate that. 702-257-5396. Ladies and gentlemen, patience is a virtue. Let's go to Angelo. Angelo, you're next up. What's up, Angelo? Hey, what's going on, JJ? What's going on, Brian? What's up, man? Hey, so, yeah, I called before. I was, uh, you know, I'm one of the uh, first responders around here, and uh, right when the coronavirus hit, I was still uh, going to ER, ER, fixing these machines and stuff. Oh, that's I right, yeah. To, I, yeah, I just wanted to chime in and say that, um, like, I'm, I'm Asian, and growing up, I grew up in the hood. I'm about 45 years old, but I grew up in the hood, and it was tough. I had to throw away all my contacts. Basically, I had to turn my life around myself. And since then, I've been able to work for high-end companies like Disney, Zappos, Amazon. I mean, I could, I, I've worked for a lot of different people. But what I'm trying to tell you is there was a, a time in my life where I had to t look in the mirror and make that change. Stop sagging my pants, um, take responsibility for my actions, and say I wanted to be productive in this society. And I did that, and it, it, it had to start with me, and, and it was nobody else. I didn't put it on anyone else. And I just, wanted to, I just wanted to convey that. Well, sure, Angela, there's no question that if you want a high-end job really basically anywhere for the most part, 99% of the time, yes, you cannot walk into a business with your pants drooped low uh, and, and, and dress like that. You just can't. But the point I am trying to convey is that there are many in the African-American community that have never applied for a job like that, have never lived in a high-end neighborhood like that, so is the, it is the only way they know how to dress, and it is the only way they know how to live, because nobody has told them otherwise. Do you see where I'm coming it, from? And, and, that, and that whole thought process of having to dress that way to, to put yourself in a position to get a job like that comes from the fact that when someone does dress with saggy pants or wearing a hoodie, that the general perception is that that person is, is more likely to, to cause trouble or, or commit chaos than someone who is not dressed like that. Okay, well, I'm not going to go there on that one and make that assumption just because somebody has their pants well, no, low. That no, means no, no, no that's, that's why when you don't when you dress that way to a job interview, you're not going to get hired. Okay, I never said it was okay to dress that way to a job interview. Again, you're missing my point. What I'm trying to say is you were brought up and I was brought up in a different community than what some of these other people are brought up. And many of these families don't have money. Many of these kids growing up are, are dressed a certain way. They don't have the funds, and nobody has told them otherwise because that is how they dress in the hood, so to speak. And it is easier said than done to say, well, 
dress this way or dress that way, and then you'll be respected. It's not so easy for people that are brought up in the hood. Let's get back to the phone calls at 702-257-5396. Let's go to Doug. Doug, you're next. What's up, Doug? Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Doing good. Uh, quick comments on everything you talked about today. Uh, number one, I think President Trump is incredibly insensitive to a lot of people in this nation, religious people and Black Lives Matter. Um, I agree with you, Brian, Roger Goodell. I think a lot of NFL players should be using their money and their voices to be out, not just be texting and twitting uh, about racial injustice. Yep. And then lastly, uh, I'm an African-American, uh, grew up in a nice neighborhood, and I think a lot of when you, the, the scenario you, you said about walking down the street at 2 a.m., a lot of that has to do with where you come from as far as your perceptions and then how you perceive people. I think J.D. has a point in – how people present themselves is where the fear comes. And that's it. I'll take your comments off the air. All right, Doug, I appreciate your phone call. Uh, again, I'll, I'll say it again. And, and by the way, I agree with just about everything you said there, Doug, and it was a really good phone call. Uh, when you're brought up, and again, I don't know what it's like to be black. I'm not black. I'm actually quite white. But with that being said, I grew up. You are a special amount of white. Uh, that's uh, well, true. I, you're almost pink. But unlike you, J.D., I did grow up where I was the minority. I grew up in a very, very small, poor town in Connecticut. Now, when I went to college, uh, uh, my family and I moved to a better area, but I grew up in a middle school, in an elementary school, where I was one of the minorities. I was white, and I was one of the minorities. Tons, tons of black friends growing up, and I was very, very fortunate and lucky enough that they accepted me. They treated me with respect, and uh, I, I learned a lot about the culture. I really did growing up, and what I can tell you is this. And again, it's very simple stuff here. This isn't brain surgery. When you're raised by one parent or two parents, an African-American family, and you don't have money, the African-American community, in many of these communities, they dress a certain way. Now, to white people, that might be considered disrespect. And yes, I agree. If you walk into a place of business or you're trying to get a gig, you're probably not going to get that gig if you're dressed like that. But with that being said, it is their culture. It is how they grew up, and nobody told them any differently, and it is a perception, and it is a culture that is different than what J.D. is talking about. That is the only point I'm trying to make. Let's get back to the phone calls. 257-5396. Let's go to George. George, you're next on the Vegas Take. Hey, what's up, George? Good morning. Good morning. How you guys doing? Good. Doing well. So to answer your question, yeah, I think you're right about that, uh, Brian, when you walk. Did we lose you, George? I think the black, you know, but to me, it's just, which people I think like that. it doesn't matter what color of skin you are. We all bleed the same, you know, and you just got to give everybody a, uh, what you call it. Yep. A benefit of the doubt, you know. Well, of course, in a perfect world. But, you know, sometimes that uh, you don't have to be a racist to have that unconscious bias. Yeah, but I think there's also you have to factor in like I'm, I'm a pretty big guy. You know, I'm, I'm 6'3", 230 pounds. If I was five foot seven, 150 pounds, my, my perception would, opinion about something after? Would, would be would be very yes. different if yes. under the circumstances. Go ahead, sir. All right, so my thing is I understand everything I have with George Floyd. This is what I don't understand. They're saying that this virus really affects the black community and black, black lives matter, right? Yes. Now, how come in Las Vegas you have 10 people at a funeral and they had all those people next together. George, and not George, can I ask you? Can I ask, saying. can I ask you a question? Did you listen to our show on Friday? If you didn't, that's okay. No, I didn't. I didn't. I did this for an hour and a half, and I criticized those that were at George Floyd's funeral. I've criticized all the BLM protesters that say Black Lives Matter, yet they're not practicing social distancing. The same as I criticized anybody at a Trump rally or open up Nevada or open up the country rallies. The same way, if you're not well, practicing, what I'm to say is if they say some, they're they're, they're fighting against their own thing. Their message. I agree. Yeah. Listen, okay. I agree. Right. I, ta okay. I talked you, about Brian. sure. I talked about that on Friday. I, I went after those who were grieving, even in the George Floyd funeral. They're not practicing social distancing. It's selfish. And if you really care about black lives and you're saying black lives matter, it's not just about police brutality. It's about practicing social distancing and not killing your fellow African Americans. It's so Once simple again, to you're me. you're correct. Oh, Brian, yeah. you're on a roll, buddy. <laughs> I appreciate that, George. Hey, man, George, you got to listen to our show every day. 
I'm so disappointed in you. You didn't listen Friday. That hurts my feelings. George, all, all due respect, I appreciate I'm also deeply troubled by that, George. <laughs> George, I appreciate the call, but to be honest yeah, with you, we did, call, that, we did that. Did we not do that for two hours yeah, on Friday? Yeah, we did on Friday. Yeah, yeah. Let's get back to the calls. 702-257-5396. Lance, you're next on the Vegas Take. Hey, what's up, Lance? Could you Lance! Give me a flavor? A Could flavor? You get on the internet right now and 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 request that uh, Martin Luther King made this statement. We are ten percent of the population and we commit fifty percent of the crime. Well, why don't you uh transfer that over on air right now, because when I called previously regarding this, you and some other black r- robot jumped on me and said, okay, I was Lance. prejudiced. Okay, I Lance, prejudiced. Lance, okay, so let's have a conversation. No, br- 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 bringing up, bringing up. Black in this, in this complex. Okay, you got to let me have a conversation with Lance. Lance, your name ha- wouldn't happen to be Wilfrey, would it? No. Your name is Lance, not Wilfrey? That's right, Lance. Okay. All right, Lance. Let's Lance have, has okay. sang. Right, He's sang songs on the show before, Brian. Okay, we'll, uh, okay I apologize. Yeah, Wilfrey. Wilfrey's, Wilfrey's I, all right, all right, totally different. Sorry, Lance. That's I apologize. Right. All right, Lance. Let's have a conversation about this. And by the way, uh, I'm not a black robot. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you looked at my genitalia, you I would agree. I didn't say you were, okay. but that no. other look. You and that other black <laughs> robot jumped on me and said I was racist. Okay. Okay. I'm hold on a second. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, ha- having having statistics does not make you racist. All right, Lance. Let's have a conversation. Calling someone a black robot might. Okay. Lance, let's have a conversation. First of all, that's an idiotic statement to call me a black robot, number one. I number didn't two. call you all right. the other all black right. person who called, okay. not you. All right, well, calling a black anyway, person a black... Anyway, you both jumped on me, and I'm not racist. All right, well, how about let's have a conversation now, and let's find that out, sir. Okay, would you agree that of the population, and, and, and it's around 50% or so that are incarcerated, would you agree that a portion of that 50% have been treated differently than somebody like you or me because of the color of their skin. Why do Which, you keep... Uh, I'm asking uh, you, I, excuse me, uh, hey, I'm asking hey, you, listen, if I you want to have a conversation, sir, sir, if you want to have an intellectual conversation, I have to be able to ask you questions, you can answer it, and then you you're ask not, me a question. Oh, okay, if you're ahead. not willing to do that, then we're not going to have this conversation, and I will move on okay, to somebody else. Go ahead. Thank you. So I will ask it again, and you've just wasted a minute or two of our airtime. Would you agree... That of the population of the black people and African Americans and minorities that are in jail, are you willing to agree that a portion of that percentage is due to the fact that maybe in our justice system they aren't treated the same as people who look like you and me? Are you willing to at least agree to that? Uh, yes, I do agree with. Okay, that. good. Okay, so we agree that that's a problem, and that's the that part is of the. That's not the problem. You don't that's think it's a problem? Hold on a second. Tell you what the you problem don't, is. All right, hold on, hold on. You don't think it's a problem. You just admitted to me that of the um, African Americans and minorities that are in prison, they're not treated the same as you or me, and you're telling me that's not an issue to you, and you don't care, it's not a problem? In is that your position, sir? In some instances it is, in some instances it is. Okay, we agree. We agree. So why can't you admit that's an issue and a problem that needs to be fixed in this country? What I'm saying is... This is the problem. And You're, no, 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 no. We're gonna move on, and I'm can gonna, I, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you your chance if you just can show a little bit of intellectual honesty and admit to me that it is a problem, and you wish that minorities would be treated the same as people that look like you and me. Can you at okay, least I'll, admit I'll, that? I'll go along with that, okay? All right. Well, okay. Thank you. Thank you. It took me about five minutes for you to admit that. Now go <laughs> ahead, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Well, the problem is, and and I made that statement about Martin Luther King, and again, you can you can go to the internet and transfer it over to on air if to prove a point. And he made this statement literally that we're ten percent of the population, we commit fifty percent of the crime. I know that you now, said that already. Now it's. 13% of the population committing 40 to 50%. So what is your point? Hold on. When a white person sees a black person, he might say, is that the good guy or the bad guy? And when, and when a cop sees a black, a good, honest, hardworking uh, black American driving his car in an all, almost all-white neighborhood because of so much black crime, and especially black-on-black crime in Chicago, Baltimore, okay. uh, St. Louis, et cetera, then, 
then uh, that person might think, is that the good guy or the bad so guy? So you're justifying racial profiling. Stop stops so much. So, all right. So, so you're, so you're no, ju- he's saying that it exists for a reason. Okay. So you're just, oh, there's a lot of reasons why African Americans are, are, are uh, more, uh, uh, there's a chance, more of a chance that they commit crime more than somebody who's white. But, sir, are you okay with racial profiling because of that? Racial, hey, I, I don't go along with it, but it, but it worked in New York for Rudy Giuliani. Giuliani. Uh, it's, well, Brian, you know that that, Rudy Giuliani. that that bias that you described is is basically a subconscious racial profiling. Like that, that's, that's yeah. exactly. So and that, that, that's exactly. Well, yeah, the, you, you just admitted that you do it yourself, though. Yeah, what I did say is, uh, and I that you have an inherent bias, uh, I think, uh, and that bias is created uh, I didn't from call it, from the mainstream media of I, the coverage. I didn't call and, it, and the fact that that more crimes are I committed did, on did. a you know significantly more crimes are committed yeah. on a national I basis I, by by one race than other races, and that's and that's I, I, why this entire conversation is taking place because that has created a stereotype. And what I was saying earlier was all this looting and rioting and destroying of businesses does nothing but make that stereotype much worse. And that, and I've never defended. To that and that doesn't have and by the way I didn't say it was an inherent bias I said it was unconscious bias those are two completely different things 702-257-5396 let's go to Michael Michael you're next on the Vegas take hey what's up Michael Michael go ahead did we did we lose Michael I think we did 257-5396 Stephen you're next on the Vegas take what's up Stephen uh hey I would just uh like to disagree with the unconscious bias I think that's making people feel guilty for no reason saying that other people have an unconscious bias is pretty much telling people what they think and i don't think that's That's true uh first of all where did i say that everybody has an unconscious bias i agree that i have an unconscious bias i never said that you have an unconscious bias and by the way i said an unconscious bias doesn't mean that you're a racist you would have to admit sir that as a whole in this country when it comes to police when it comes to you know just everyday life african americans are looked at in, in in some cases and treated differently would you at least agree to that uh yeah i do but i don't okay, think there you it go. Is, i do not think it is systemic racism what is it then and i do i think it's racism period okay all right so what's the difference if What's you the difference? say that it, if you say it's systemic racism, mm-hmm. that means that the entire foundation is set up for failure. Is set no, it up doesn't. For failure. It's yeah, not true. Yeah, no, that, that's what that's racist, what that means. And that's and, not what the you know, and I, I'm I'm hearing I never I, said I, that. I'm, I'm hearing a lot. True. I'm hearing a lot right now that that capitalism is a foundation of racism. And I think that a lot of this a lot of this movement with what's taking place there hasn't been a lot of demands yet, but I, I think that there there is a there is a thought process that racism will not go away in this country until it until capitalism has gone away. So systemic, where, where socialism or communism would come into the conversation, and that that is scaring a lot of people. But that 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 is starting to to come up as as a topic on a more consistent basis than, the, uh, it, than it ever has. Caller, and, and capitalism is, is being is being. We talk about the system. The system is capitalism, but the capitalism is is being you know called the catalyst. Of, of racism across the country and I think I think that it, that's taken away from there are there are a lot of personal choices that people can make over the course of their life and there are a lot of social systems and there there are there are a lot there's a lot of you know things in place that that can help you become successful in the United States in capitalist America but there's but there's also a lot of people that are are, are not choosing to make those correct decisions and they are they are suffering for it, but that but that's what's going to happen. You're going to have haves and have-nots in a capitalist society, not just in America, but across the world. Uh, systemic racism to that last caller doesn't mean that everybody is racist and everything in this country is racist. What it does mean is that is a generalization as a whole. I believe it is more difficult for a minority or an African American to succeed in this country than it is for somebody who is white.